No one ever looks into the little thing. It's always up to me. Find the switch, find the light. Ow! Griswold! In here! Griswold? What you doing down here? Oh, find the lights, will you? Find the lights. Ah. How did you know where the switch was? In the well, 17th paragraph, third line. Oh, I don't like this, Cheerio. The old man's gonna pull something. He's dead. You don't know him like I do. I've been with him for 30 years. You don't know him. You talk like you're still working for him. I am. Oh, nonsense. I wish it were all over. Oh, cheerio. Uh, Griswold, will you cut that out? Hey. This table's never even been used. Mr. Howsworthy never played. He said he was afraid of losing. Afraid of losing? Uh-huh. Funny man. I tell you, you don't know the half of it. You didn't know him. I thought it was all finished. And now this. Hey, I think I better fix you a drink. This was his game room. No one was ever allowed in here. No one. Well, this is what he ordered. This is what he's going to get. Uh-oh. Get the will. The vultures are coming. <laughs> Insight, stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. All of us need to give meaning and purpose to our lives. And so we're led to ask, what's worth living for? What's of real value? Money and pleasure and power are good. But most of us would admit that these material values are not good enough. They can't give us the happiness we desire. Most of us would say that the real values are human ones. Peace, justice, freedom, love for ourselves, for other people, for God. We say this, but do we really mean it? How do we invest our time and energy? What do we think about? What really motivates our actions? If we are honest with ourselves, all too many of us must admit that in practice, we have opted for the less than human. Why do we do this? We know that money and power and pleasure can't deliver, yet in reality, we live for them. Why? Is it human weakness? or social pressure, or fear, fear of failure, fear of loving and being loved, fear of really facing ourselves that causes us to live in this way? his mistress. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please be seated. The uh, will is brief, but there are some stipulations. Oh, there go my plans. 
As you know, uh, Mr. Houseworthy had some rather unusual ideas. <laughs> My father was crazy. Eccentric, perhaps, but not not mad. Eccentric. I'll uh, read the preface. I, James Houseworthy, being of sound mind, do hereby order that my will be read under the following circumstances. First, that my sister and her husband, Anne and Clyde de Bassey, my son, James Houseworthy II, Miriam Hunter, and my nephew, Willie, be here present. Uh, where is William? He's on his way from the airport. Who gave you money to fly here? No. It was in the will. Oh. Second, all are to meet here in my game room and remain together for seven minutes before the will is read. <laughs> I'm uh, very sorry about all this. Well, is that all? There is one more thing. Uh, yes, dear, and, and that is? Bring him in. That was in the will, too. Always with a flair. Seven minutes. Now I need a drink. Something's going to happen. Something terrible. I can feel it. Boo. I don't think that's funny. <laughs> Come on, Griswold. Four grown people and a stiff? Nothing's gonna happen. Well, we better stay close by. <sighs> Look at him. That smug little smile. I'll bet that was in the will, too. I'll leave it alone. It? Ooh, you were nice to it while it was alive. How much do you think it will leave you, Anne, dear? Well, Clyde and I were closest to him, Jimmy. He hated you. I am his son. I expect a heavy, heavy share, right, Dad? I've seen better jobs. You'd think with all his money. You knew him very well. As well as a woman can know a man. He liked you. How do you know? I have ways. You know me? Well. You did OK. You want to try for better? Perhaps. I'll be in the office Friday morning at 10. I am in mourning. Only for five minutes more. We should become closer now that he's gone. My father. Oh, well, I'll, I'll always take care of you. I am James Houseway II. I need no one, least of all you. Did you know your father loved William? <laughs> oh, it's not so. Well, this is true, and since he did love him more than he did <laughs> no. you, well, no, it's most likely that he will leave him an ample sum of money. 
He wouldn't. You mean he didn't? He was crazy. Look at him. Go ahead. Look at him. Oh. But there are ways, Jimmy. Should you not get what you deserve? Well, oh, there are ways, sweetheart. Tell me. I want what is mine. I'm his son. I'm entitled. Yes, yes. Welcome, William. Say hello to your cousin, Jimmy. And Clyde and your uncle's friend, Miriam. Why wasn't I told? You missed the funeral, sweet William. It was gorgeous. Thousands of people, TV coverage, and one million, I repeat, one million forget-me-nots hung from the cathedral walls. When did he die? Friday, a week ago. <laughs> What's he doing here? As part of the will. We're waiting to see how much he really loved us. Are you the people he loved? I am. I'm the one he really loved. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. My father will prove his love. Dear, dear, sweetheart. Annie's here. And Annie will always be here. Dear, sweetheart. When did he die? A week ago, Friday. You silly old man. I never did understand you. Why did you drag me here to this Halloween party? I hate you, do you know that? <laughs> Willie, hey, help me out of this thing, will you? It's kind of tight in here. Oh, I don't think they planned it for comfort. Oh! Boy, thank you. Worms will get me soon. Why? Ooh. I wish I had a drink. You want one? No, against the rules. Oh, not yours. No, not mine. OK, what's the game? What? Well, this is your party, Willie. It's for you. Bull. Hey, Miriam looks good. That Clyde isn't exactly blind, either. Why is it for me? My emasculated son. Look, forget it, Houseworthy, OK? Forget it? That's what I like about you. You got a chutzpah. Stupid, but lots of chutzpah. Well, if you like me, why didn't you hire me? I didn't want you in the business. Well, I could have done well. Well, hey, you know better. Look, all I ever needed was just a little help. Just a start, that's all. I've known you all my life, Willie. A little help from me and you'd end up just like me. <laughs> well, that's what I want. I mean, what's wrong with that? I want to succeed. I want to have the wine and the roses. I mean, uh, what's wrong with that? Really, Willie? Is that what you want? Good for you. I wanted money, too. I loved money. With money, I had security, right? Status, a key to the exec's bathroom. I own the executive bathroom. <laughs> but I did everything because I didn't know better. Well, at least you made something out of yourself. You were a leader. I rejected anything that made me human. Human you weren't, that I believe. I was a child. But I never said to myself, I'm a trembling child. Instead, I said, no, I am strong. I need no one. Oh, the feeling of God! I'm strong, I need no one. All oh, the feeling of God. Come on. I was an illusion, like the image on a movie screen. You don't believe that. Stupid kid! I was a loser, because I wasn't real! Now look, Ankh, I hate you. You understand that, right? 
Huh? Yeah, yeah. But as much as I despise you, I respect what you did in life. You were a winner. Yeah. No, I don't play this game. Neither did I. Watch. I just lost. Break. Break before it's too late. Good, it's not too late. You know you're afraid. You're alive. When my eight ball rolled in, I didn't even care. It's just a silly game. Everybody's afraid of something. So they put on little masks and they play power games. I am taller than you are because I own two cars. I am smarter than you are because I earn more money than you do. Oh, sweet equalizer. Now, Willie, you're afraid. You're afraid of just being Willie. Only when you know you're just Willie are you really strong. Dear Abby, I have not been feeling really strong lately. My late uncle, who just passed away, says that I am weak because I do not know that I am weak. Can you help me? Signed, A. Pygmy. Only when you're strong and secure can you accept what you are and not what you dreamed yourself to be. That is why I will not leave you any money. I don't have a chance, then? You're gonna leave them everything? What everything? I give them nothing. Look at you, <laughs> worried about success. <sighs> oh, no, man. Uh, you think I want to be like you? <laughs> I'll bet you you work hard on it. Every minute of every hour of every day. Do you believe in yourself? Yes, I do. Then you will succeed. Willie, I don't want to seem to pry. There are three things that men never seem to want to discuss with each other. God, love, and the yearly paycheck. But I am dead, Willie. So how much are you making? Four thousand? No. Three thousand? Six thousand eight hundred and forty two dollars and eighty three cents. You are dead. Why, Willie, when I was your age, I would have sold my soul for twice that. But William, six thousand eight hundred and forty two dollars and eighty. Shut up! Why, Willie, I have told you nothing. I will tell you more of nothing. I was awakened every morning at 4.30 by my private secretary, Alfred. You remember Alfred. He escorted you out of my office the last time. The room I slept in was always 37 degrees. I liked it cold. I received the morning paper. I would speed read it. Then I would eat my breakfast of two eggs and toast and coffee. And then at exactly 4.58, I would shower and shave. At 5.22, I always arrived at the Houseworthy building, and then I would plan my strategy for the day. The morning would be consumed with mail and board meetings. And then at 11.47, my secretary would serve me a light lunch, and I would siesta for an hour in my private 37-degree office. You're boring me. Why, Willie, is this your dream? Isn't this what you're busting your butt for? At 5.30, I showered and shaved in my specially built suite at the office, of course. And then at 6.10, I had dinner and Miriam. I then showered again and slept for an hour, after which I went back to business. And with all of that, I was still a good husband. I managed to service my wife once a week. Sundays was always her day. A regular uh, Don Juan. Was, Willie, was. But that was still not the real me. That was still Mr. Houseworthy, the financial wizard with the millionaire mask. Houseworthy, you don't believe a word that you say. You are a hypocrite. I saw my son once a week, too. 
as he grew, he became just like me with all my fine ideals, you know, better living, status, security. Thank God Gloria is dead. I suppose you love him now. Willie, that's me over there. My son. I created him. I just created myself all over again. Lonely, frightened old man. A lonely, frightened, stupid, hypocritical old man. I won't make your mistakes. That's the spirit, Willie. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Good. Bravo. My son was all I had. All I knew in my life. All I leave. Bravo. All I leave behind. Willie, you don't understand. I blew my brains out. <laughs> I, I just finished the job. I, I was already dead inside. You shot yourself? Yeah. Where? Where? In the temple. Oh, that was dumb. Murdered them, too. They're all dead. They just don't realize it yet. Well, here we are. Neither is better than the other. You don't want to accept what you are, and I don't want to accept what I am. I thought this little party might work for you, but it hasn't, has it? No. Well, I told you, I was a loser. <laughs> Willie, do you believe in God? Good. Don't start believing. It's easier to fool yourself without him. Do you? Do I want? Believe in God? No. Fairy tale, right? Where are you now? None of your business. I'm. I'm tired. Just like Dracula. Willie. I love you. I've loved you. Oh, oh boy. Oh, yeah, now you tell me. Now you lie there in that box and you say, Willie, I love you. <laughs> well, why not before? Well, things happen at strange times. People say it's one or two o'clock in the morning. They never say the sun is about to come up. Willie, forget everything I said. No, don't. Don't forget. Give my life meaning. Meaning. Meaning? You lie there, and you cut me out of your will, and then you say, give your life meaning? Oh, boy!
The seven minutes are up. Uh, William? Oh, uh, uh, leave him, dear. Just, just get on with it. Very well. To my son, James Houseworthy II, I leave the sum of two million four hundred and fifty thousand six hundred and twenty-three dollars and two cents. Well, go on, go on. To Anne, my sister, I impart seven hundred and forty-six thousand dollars and the present holding interest in the partnership. My oh. president! <laughs> <laughs> to uh, Miriam, I leave 43,000 shares in the Air Transport Corporation. To all these before mentioned, I wish Godspeed. And to my nephew, William, I leave... I leave the eight ball for my billiard table. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, boy, I've got something I want to talk to you about later. Uh, Miriam. Ah, uh, it's all right, Jimmy boy. Annie's going to take care of you. Say goodbye to your cousin, will you? <laughs> See, Daddy loved you after all. <laughs> <clears throat> William. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.